Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, I love you. And it's not by my strength, but by the grace of God. So before I start, I like to pray. So let us bow our heads. Thank you, Jesus. We are grateful for this moment. We are grateful for Jehovah God, you reign. You are the ancient of days. You are the Alpha and the Omega. I pray, O oh God, that even as I preach your word, grant me the words, grant me the strength of God. For if I only pray in Jesus' name, we pray and believe. Amen. Amen. So I'm delighted to be here. And before I start, I like to read uh, something. There's something I had written, and I thought it would be good if I read out to you. Uh, it's something that I've been thinking for the last two days, three days, and I hope that it will bless you. So something crucial came into my mind about this generation. I just had a privilege to talk with a friend of mine on the WhatsApp platform. He was an atheist before he came to accept that God exists. In the middle of the conversation, I realized that he had this pride in him that he has too much knowledge or in simple terms he was knowledgeable. I had to have a glimpse on the generation we live in I am shocked at my findings. We live in a world full of knowledge. Faith has been turned to physical evidence. A world where we don't know which is to be accepted as the truth. There's no doubt many have wandered from the faith due to controversial findings. Explicit theories have emerged and a critical question arises. What is the truth? This is a question that Pilate asked Jesus during the questioning. This is something we tend to ask ourselves each and every time we hear something out. One thing remains for us as Christians. Be watchful and of sober mind. So my title will be Be Watchful. And our reading will come from the book of First Thessalonians. Chapter 5, from verse 1 to 11. First Thessalonians, chapter, one, from, chapter 5, from verse 1 to 11. And it says, Now, brothers and sisters, about times and dates, we do not need to write to you, for you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night, while people are saying, Peace and safety, destruction will come on them suddenly as labor pains on a pregnant woman and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness, so that this day shall surprise you like a thief. You are all children of the light and children of the day who do not belong to the night or to the darkness. So then, let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be awake and sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, putting on faith and love as a breastplate, and hope of salvation as a helmet. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. So, the first passage that I was reading is about a friend of mine where we were discussing about, uh, there was something we were controversial about, the life of Jesus and the critics, he said that there was. And he said that Jesus came to establish an earthly kingdom. And I was saying that Jesus came to establish a heavenly kingdom. And I realized that 
he was too much into the the earthly events that happened about the politics of that time about what transpired and he had many critics in his mind and i i just realized that we are living in a world full of knowledge we are living in a world full of many theories we are being told about theories that happen theories that shall happen and we don't know what is the truth we don't know which one to accept and we don't know which one to deny and this is something that we need to take to account therefore coming with the quest with the with the title be watchful and i i thought that this would be good if i discuss about the the day of the lord and you see that paul addresses to the Thessalonians that the day of the lord shall come like a thief the day of the lord no one shall expect it no one shall anticipate it but it shall come like a thief and in saying that many people will be will be striving for peace and safety and destruction will come on them suddenly so these events are transpiring due to the antichrist story about the spirit the peace and safety and they shall not know what will transpire as in the days of Noah and as in the days of Lot. At the moment that Noah entered the ark, the wrath of God was poured upon the earth. The moment that Lot ran out of Sodom and Gomorrah, the wrath of God befell upon these two cities. And we see that he's telling us, but you brothers and sisters are not in darkness, so that this day should surprise you like a thief you are like you are all children of the light and children of the day you do not belong to the night or to the darkness and we see here paul saying that we should not be surprised by this thing we should not be surprised at which day the lord will come we should not have tension on asking ourselves is this the end of the world we should not be afraid he said that this thing should not surprise you. In Matthew chapter 24, Jesus explains it very well. That there shall come many things, there shall come wars, there shall come famines, earthquakes, diseases. And you see that you are living in such a time, you are living in a time whereby we don't know the fate of tomorrow, we don't know what will transpire, but all you rely on is the faith that you have, the faith in Jesus Christ is what we rely upon. Because he says that you should not be surprised. And we see that every day we don't know what shall transpire. You know, in the book of Matthew chapter 24, Jesus says that people will be drinking, will be eating, life will look as normal, life will be normal at that time. And there suddenly we shall see the coming of the Son of Man, Jesus, and will be caught up with him in the clouds. Amen? Amen. So as in the course of time I've been studying about the epistles of Paul, and I came to realize that Paul was, was a certain person who was very determined for God, he was determined to, to preach about the message of Jesus Christ. In Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 2, he says, chapter 2, verse 2, yeah, he says that, let nothing come out of him except Christ and him crucified. We find that he is so determined, he's living like Christ will come tomorrow. He's living like Christ will come upon us any day, any hour. And I think that is the spirit we should have at this moment. That is the spirit that we should have, whereby we wait upon the Lord each and every day. We live as if we are not looking for earthly things, but we are looking for the heavenly rewards. Because Christ says that we shall not, we are not here just to pass by, but we are here as laborers. We are the laborers of the kingdom of God. And when we are laborers, we live as if he shall come today 
and he will examine us, he will examine our hearts, he will examine which decision we made, which decision we made here on earth. Because after that there shall be troubles, there shall be many things that shall happen. The book of Revelation explains about that. It talks about the great tribulation. It talks about what shall transpire, the 21 judgments of God. And the funny thing is that God is merciful. God wants all of us to repent. God wants all of us to turn back to him. Because he himself is, he has a plan of salvation for the Jews. He has a plan of salvation for the Gentiles. And we are the Gentiles. We are the Gentiles that keep the part of the outer temple, the outer court of the temple. And Paul says that there is this, there is this olive tree. And this olive tree, it is built upon the patriarchs. The patriarchs are Abraham, are Moses, Elijah, all of those. And we see that the tree is supposed to be for the Israelites. But God had mercy on us and he put us as wild olive shoots on the world or on the on the true olive olive tree. And we find that we thrived. So we should not be boastful. We should continue celebrating that salvation came upon us. And you see at the end he says, For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Salvation came to us. Salvation is for everyone. Salvation is for the sinner. It's not for the righteous, but for the sinner. For the whole generation, no one is righteous. No one has kept the law, but we are all sinners. And in this, in this uh, diary that has been, I've been writing, you can realize that uh, I have been so concerned about this generation that you live on. I'm, co I'm so concerned about the things that transpire. And we can see that many people have wandered away from the faith. Many people have put the thoughts of God, the faith, and mixed it with other things, and have mixed it with the worldly things to suit people. But, and this arises a question which Pilate asked, what is the truth? What is the truth in this life that he lived? We hear of stories, we hear of rumors, we hear of everything that transpires, but one thing that we are certain is we ask ourselves this question. What I am hearing, is it the truth? What I am hearing, is it the way? And there are many ways that have been formed. And Jesus left us with an answer. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can go through the Father except through him. And we find that Jesus is, only, is the only hope of this world. Jesus is the only hope that we have. And I'd just like you to imagine a world without God. A world without Jesus Christ. And you think about the, the deeds of the flesh, the deeds of the human heart. And the human heart, Jeremiah says, is beyond cure. And you can see that what transpires in the thoughts of men is War, what transpires in the, men, in the hearts of men is lust, greed. And imagine yourself living in a world full of lust, greed, without Jesus Christ, without God. And we see that we have no hope. But Jesus came that we might find hope. So that we can be the new Jerusalem, the holy city. And he shall be the groom to come and take us to come and rapture us, to come and save us, to establish a kingdom, a kingdom that will last forever, a kingdom that is not of men, a kingdom that is not ruled 
by people full of greed, but a kingdom that has a righteous judge. And we see that in Revelation chapter 22, starting from verse 10, it says, Then he told me, I was talking to John, Do not seal up the words of prophecy of this scroll, because the time is near. Let the one who does wrong continue to do wrong. Let the vile person continue to be vile. Let the one who does right continue to do right. And let the holy person continue to be holy. And this calls up for one thing. Why will Jesus wait for 2,000 years? Why will Jesus wait for 2,000 years to come and save us? And still he hasn't come. Because he's still waiting upon us to repent. He's still waiting upon us to look up to him. And we are the watchers. We are the watchers of the church of God. And in this generation, we, all, all we require is prayer. Prayer is the key. Without prayer, James says that we are like people tossed to and fro. We are people that are tossed by the waves of the sea. The waves of the sea are temptations, are worldly concepts. The waves of the sea are the deeds of the evil one who sways us to do his evil deeds. But with the prayers, we have an anchor. With prayers, we open the heavens and bring out the supernatural. We do not walk in the natural, but we walk in the supernatural. Without prayer, I don't think one, one can stand with many thoughts that come in mind. What we feed the mind, we live you know, there, there's the internet, there's the TV stations, there are the radio stations, and what comes out of them? What do we feed the mind? We find that we feed things that are earthly. We feel that we feed things that destroy the faith. You know, faith is, faith is, is held strong by love, the love that, that Jesus had for us. John says that perfect love drives out fear. And when there's no fear, there's faith. You have faith in God. You have faith that in each and every step that I make, I have faith in God. He will never pull me down. He will never lead me astray. And then he says, lead me to thy righteous path. Lead me to the path that you've designed for me. And... Love is what holds us together and prayer because prayer in these times is very crucial. There are many attacks that you are suffering from as the Christian community. You are facing attacks from the intellectuals. You are facing attacks from you know, these theories that I'm talking about facing attacks from the spirit of the Antichrist. And this is something that we need to put up hold in, the, in our work of faith and be watchful. We are living in times whereby not everything is secure, not everything is at our hands, and we should keep watch. We should be of sober mind. And Peter says it very well, that be of sober mind, for the evil one is prowling around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. The day of the Christ, the day of the Lord is at hand, the time is near, and we should look up to Christ, we should focus on him only. We cannot trust people. We have seen that there have been many things that have occurred during the past few months. And we can't trust on anything. All we can trust is on the name of Jesus. Because he has filled with us this hope that he shall redeem us, he shall save us. And 
In him we shall find the truth, the truth that Pilate was asking Jesus. What is the truth? In him we shall find the truth. We shall find the truth of walking in this journey. The journey is not easy, but he's the one to restore us. He drew us near to him. So we should trust in him. He knows us better. And we can see when during the Last Supper, Jesus told Peter that he will disown him three times. And we see that Jesus knew the heart of Peter more than Peter knew himself. God knows our hearts better than we know ourselves. He knows everything in our hearts more than we can imagine. And he's taking us through this path. But what we lack is faith. What we lack is faith in him. But when we have faith in him, he takes us through the road, he takes us through the path. And you see that we should not rely on our own strength, should not rely on our own might, but we should rely upon the power of God. And as I finish, uh, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just like to read the verse from the book of First Timothy, chapter 4, verse 1. The Spirit clearly says that in later times some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits. But we are, we are the watchmen. We need to pray. We need to pray for people not to wander away in such a pace. We need to stand in the gap. We need to arise. And we are told that we are not like people who sleep in the night, but we are people who are sober during the day. We should be sober, we should rise up and stand in the gap that has been set. There's a huge gap. There are the true believers. There are those who do not yet recognize which side they are. And there are those who still have not yet received the light. And we are people to stand in between the gap. We are people to witness, to preach. And that will be fulfilling the word of the Lord. That will be fulfilling what he has called us for. For we are laborers. And I pray that as we continue to move, as we continue to keep the pace, let us be watchful and let us continue to pray, to pray hard, because without prayer we shall be tossed to and fro and the evil one shall find a chance to devour us. So I'll, let us close our eyes as we finalize. Thank you, Lord. We are thankful of this life, this moment. It's not given up, our Father, that we shall wake up, we shall rise up, and we shall sleep. But God, it's all by your grace. It's all by your amazing love. You've told us to be watchful. You've told us to be on the lookout, to be of sober mind. Because the time is near and the day is at hand. We thank you for, for your everlasting love and for saving us. We pray for those who are, in, who are still lost, oh God. Let your light shine upon them. Use us as vessels to shine upon them, oh Lord. For truly you are the light. And light overcomes darkness, and darkness shall never understand it. We thank you, we love you, we call that believing and trusting. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So I wish you a blessed week, and let us be on the lookout, amen. Thank you so much, brother Kelvin. May God bless you for a wonderful one for us this event. Praise be to God. So he has reminded us to be watchful and uh
as God has spoken to us, let us continue to be watchful. And also let us continue also to share this message with others. Because as he was uh, uh, ending the message, he has told us that these are the days when uh, many will try to learn away from their faith. But we must be, we must stand firm and uh, encourage them towards the ways of God. Praise be to God. Tutazindi kushikiria apo and maombi yangu ya kwamba mfalme atazindi kutuongoza na kutupa nguvu zaidi ya kusimama imara tukiwa tunamgojea. Praise be to God. Nasema hakuna mwenye anajua siku wala wakati. Nitukae tukiwa tumejipanga. Praise be to God. Kwa hivyo ninaomba tuweze kusimama ndio tuweze kumaliza ushirika wetu. Kuwakumbusha ya kwamba Jumapili uh, tutakuwa tunakuwa na maombi kuanzia Zambi mpaka saa tatu that is one hour then the service is another one hour which is start at 10:30 to 11:30 kwa hivyo pia wale wanatusikia tunawakaribisha uh, ukisikia hauna mahali pa kwenda kuwa bundu njo katika nyumba ya Mungu ni nyumba ya babako ili tuweze kumwabudu Mungu pamoja Naomba Jehovah zindi kuwalinda na kusimama nanyi kila mahali mtakapoenda na kama vile neno lake limetuambia ya kwamba zindi kutufanya nuru na kwamba kila mahali tutakanyanga nuru ya Bwana ikaangaze katika maisha ya watu wake katika jina la Yesu Mungu atume malaika wake wakawalinde kila wakati ya kwamba mtakuwa salama mikononi mwa Mungu na pia wale ambao wako nyumbani wale ambao wataweza kuwa nasi jioni ya leo mahali walipo neema na nguvu za Mungu zikaweze kuwalinda in the name of God the Father the name of God the Son and the name of the Holy Spirit we do pray amen amen and now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Mungu